You'd be forgiven in thinking that YouTubers make a lot of money. Popular YouTubers often show their new mansion, or their latest luxury car, or their beautiful wife or girlfriend. You'll even see news stories of six-year-old Korean YouTubers purchasing $8 million property in Gangnam. I don't blame you for thinking that YouTube is a road to riches. So in this video, using my own channel as an example, I'd like to show you the real situation. I have almost 4,000 subscribers. According to socialblade.com, that ranks me at around 1.68 millionth in their database. Note though that they don't include YouTube channels with less than 5 subscribers. How many channels are in their database? I don't exactly know, but by way of comparison, here's a YouTube channel with 15 subscribers. They rank at around 23 millionth. That means that my little channel is in the top 10% of channels on YouTube. If we draw a pyramid where this is the channel with 15 subscribers, then this is where I am, way above average. How much do I make? Well, this is a fairly accurate estimate. It varies from month to month, but I probably get around $200 a month, depending on the month. Obviously, I'm not trying to show off. I mean, $200 a month is barely anything to show off about. I'm just trying to keep things in perspective. The point is, the people making millions of dollars off YouTube, or even just the people making enough money to live off, occupy a very small minority. However, if you read the latest blog post by YouTube CEO Susan Wojcicki, you'd probably be led to believe that YouTubers are raking it in. She wrote, Around the globe, the number of channels earning more than $100,000 continues to climb 40% year over year. Obviously, these are cherry-picked statistics. I'm sure they're true, but they don't tell us the real story about the average YouTuber. I'm above average, apparently, and I'm only getting around $200 a month. What does that tell us about the average YouTuber? How much are they getting? Sweet Fanny Adams. Most successful YouTubers who show off their wealth take you for guided tours in their huge houses, or talk about their latest luxury car. So in the interest of openness, I'm going to do the same. The success of an average YouTuber. Here's my house. It's actually a three-bedroom flat that I rent. Bedroom number three is more of an office than a bedroom. There's barely enough space to fit in a single bed. Bedroom number two actually used to be a garage, but the owners found they could charge more rent by turning it into a bedroom. All in all, I would call this a one and a half bedroom flat. It's certainly not a three bedroom one. Here's my car. It's a six year old Mitsubishi Mirage. It was the cheapest car on the market six years ago. It's reliable, it's fuel efficient, but it certainly isn't a Lamborghini. On top of that, I own a computer and a microwave. If this is a popular YouTuber's house, then this is mine. Remember, I'm in the top 10% of YouTubers. Being a YouTuber is just like any other creative profession. We used to talk about starving artists and struggling actors, but we can certainly now add YouTubers to the mix. Research conducted last year showed that about 96.5% of all of those trying to become YouTubers won't make enough money off of advertising to crack the US poverty line. Breaking into the top 3% of most viewed channels could bring in an advertising revenue of about $16,800 a year. That's a bit more than the US federal poverty line of $12,140 for a single person. Of course, this is not a reason not to make YouTube videos. I'd do it because I enjoy it. But if your only goal is to make money, you're better off working as a waiter or, heaven forbid, going on the Australian dole. The average dole recipient gets about five times as much as I get from YouTube. That's saying something. Do YouTube, or acting, or writing, or art, because you're passionate about it. Don't do it if your only goal is to become a millionaire.